Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be making an RGB LED that can be controlled in two ways. Physically using three potentimeters, one for each color channel, and also wirelessly using your phone. You can do this with pretty much any Arduino based board. First we're going to look at the components needed for the project. Then we'll go through the circuit on a breadboard. Then go through the programming needed for the project. And finally we'll see it all working in action. Now this is an optional step, but if you have a 3D printer, I'll be printing a little case for it to make it more permanent, because I want to actually use it as a reading light. I'll leave the required 3D models for you to download with the code below in the description. So let's get started. So the components you need for this project are an RGB LED, of course, three 220 ohms resistors. If you don't know what resistor value to use for your RGB LED, you can just use 1K resistors, three 10K potentimeters or any value close to that, a sliding switch, but you don't need this if you don't want to have an on and off switch. The microcontroller that I'm going to use is the Tiny 84. It's basically this tiny integrated circuit that you can program just like any Arduino board. They are super small and really cheap, which makes them perfect for this project. I highly recommend you check out the Tiny microcontrollers if you haven't heard about them already. They also make a smaller version, the Tiny 85, but again, you can use any suitable Arduino board that you want. Now we're also going to be using the ESP8266, more specifically the ESP01. We need this to give us access to Wi-Fi so we can control the LED from our phone. To program the ESP01 and the Tiny84, we need to use two separate USB adapters because we can't directly connect a USB cable to them. For the ESP01, we need to use a UART USB adapter that looks like this. For the Tiny84, we need to use a USB ASP, which looks like something like this. We will go through all the connections you need to make for each later on this video when we need to upload the code. Just a side note, if you have an Arduino board such as an UNO, you can program the Atani using that instead of using the USB ASP. But I'm not going to go through that in this video since there are plenty of tutorials showing you how to upload code to the Atani using the Arduino board. So you can just check those out. But in this video we're gonna use the USB ASP to program the Atani which is also super easy. You also need a power supply. Because I want this project to be portable so I'm gonna use a battery. But you can use any power source you want. For example, if you are using an Arduino board that has a 3.3 volts pin, you can use that. I'll be using an 18650 battery. Now this last component is optional and you only need it if you're going to use a battery as your power source. It's a 3.3 volts voltage regulator. As you may know, the voltage output of a battery changes over time as it is used. To make sure we get a consistent supply of voltage, we use a voltage regulator which takes in the voltage from the battery and gives us a constant voltage output. I will be using the MCP1700 voltage regulator with two capacitors to deal with the voltage spikes. You can solder the capacitors together directly onto the voltage regulator so it looks like this, which then you can very easily and conveniently use anywhere in your projects. But any 3.3 voltage regulator will work and you only need this if you're going to use a battery for your power supply. Now for the wiring for this project, start by placing the iTiny84 and the ESP01 on the breadboard. Connect the VCC and ground pins to the power rails of the breadboard. Just remember to also connect the CHPD pin of the ESP to VCC as well. Now the reason why we're using the ESP is to give us the ability to connect to the Wi-Fi so we can control the LED using our phone. So when we make a change in our phone, the data from our phone is sent through Wi-Fi to the ESP which then sends the data to the Atani, which will then change the LED. To send data to the Atani 84 from the ESP, we use serial communication, which is pretty much sending data through wires. We can use serial communication using the RX and TX pins on the ESP. Now, since the Atani 84 does not have hardware RX and TX pins, we have to use software serial, which allows us to choose pins to act like RX and TX pins. Here I have chosen RX to be pin PA0 and TX to be PA1 on the Tiny. So connect the RX of the ESP to the TX pin of the Tiny, which will be the PA1 pin, and the TX of the ESP to the RX pin of the Tiny, which will be the PA0 pin. And that's the serial communication wiring done. For the potentimeters, the first pot is for controlling the red channel of the RGB LED, the second for green, third for blue. 
Connect the ground and VCC pins for each pot to the power rails of the breadboard. And for the output pins for the red, green and blue pots, connect them to pins PA4, PA3, PA2 on the tiny, which are the ADC pins that converts the analog input to digital values. Now for the RGB LED, connect the red, green and blue pins to PA5, PA6 and PA7 pins on the tiny. And make sure you have the resistors in there as well. For the longest leg of the RGB LED, it will depend on the specific RGB LED you have. Some requires the longest pin to be connected to VCC and others to ground. For mine, it needs to be connected to ground. So if your LED does not light up when we turn everything on later, just change that and it should then light up. Now since I'm using a battery for my power supply, I'm adding the voltage regulator. If you're powering using a 3.3 pin from a microcontroller for example, then your final circuit will look like this. However, if you're using a battery and a voltage regulator, it needs to be connected like this. There's nothing much to really say about this, just make the connections. Now that we have wired everything together, let's look at the programming for this project. Let's first go through the code for the ESP01. To install the ESP01 board, add this link to your additional boards in the Arduino IDE preferences. Then on the tools menu, select the board as the generic ESP8266 model. To control the RGB LED from our phone, we're going to be using Blink, which gives us a very easy way to send data to an Arduino from a phone which is exactly what we want. So first we need to install the Blink library. To do that, go to Tools, Manage Libraries, search for Blink, and install this library right here, use the latest version. Now that we have the Arduino library for Blink installed, we will also of course need to install the Blink app on our phone if you don't have it already. Once you've installed the Blink app on your phone, create a project, Add three sliders which we will use to control the red, green and blue colors of the LED. For the red, green and blue sliders, choose Virgil pins V0, V1, V2 respectively. And for all sliders, make the range from 0 to 255. And turn off send on release and choose a write interval of 100 milliseconds. So this will send the slider values to the Arduino every 100 milliseconds. You would have also received an email from Blink after creating the project, which contains an authentication code. So take note of that. And that is all the setup we need to do on the phone. Now let's go through the code for the ESP. First, we need to include the Wi-Fi library and the Blink library for the ESP8266. We are going to use three constants to store the authentication code the Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password. For the authentication code, you just need to paste in the code you received by email from the Blink app when we created the project on the app on the phone. For the SSID and password, put your Wi-Fi name and password so the ESP can connect to the Wi-Fi. We need three integers to store the value of the sliders that are coming from the phone. We also need this string spacer to separate each integer by a space so we can easily send all three slider values to the Atani at once. This will be more clear in a bit. In our setup function, all we need to do is start serial. I have chosen a baud rate of 19,200, which I found work very well with the Atani 84 because remember, we are sending data to the Atani using serial. And we also need to start Blink by passing in the authentication code, the SSID and password. Next, we need to get the slider values we added from the app. We do this by simply using this Blink write function, which we can pass in the virtual pin we want to receive. In the case of the red slider, it is the V0 pin, and then we can store the slider value as an integer in the global red value variable we made so we can access it in a loop function. So every 100 milliseconds, the ESP will request the slider value from the blink app, which will then update our red value variable. We also need this for the green and blue sliders. For the loop function, first we run blink, then combine all three slider values into one big string using a space in between each number so we can easily extract each value later in that tiny. This is where that space variable comes in. Then we simply send the string to the tiny through serial which sends it through the wires. We also add a 10 millisecond delay to make sure that tiny can keep up and everything runs smoothly. 
Now we just need to upload this code to the ESP using the UART USB adapter. Here are the connections you need to make. Once you made all the connections, plug the USB into the computer, select the correct port and upload the code. And that is all done for the ESP01. Let's now go through the code for the Atani84. First we need to install the Atani84 board. So to do that, add this link to your additional boards in your Arduino IDE preferences. Then from the tools menu, select your board as the Atani244484. And then for the processor, select the Atani84 and choose the clock speed to be the internal 8 MHz. Now there is actually another library that you can use for the Atani, which is updated regularly and currently being maintained. However, I found that the library from Damilis is more reliable. However, if you're interested in that other library, you can find it using this link. So now let's actually go through the code. First, we need to include the software serial library, because remember that Atani doesn't have built-in hardware RX and TX pins. As we saw earlier from the breadboard wiring, we are using pins PA0 and PA1 for the RX and TX pins. We then need to make an instant of the software serial, I have called it serial 1. We need three constants for the RGB LED, one for the red, green and blue pins, which will output PWM signals. Another three constants for each of the potentimeter pins, which will allow us to read the potentimeter values as we turn them. Now since we want to be able to control the LED in two ways, physically using the potentimeters and using our phone, we need to have a way of determining which method to use at a given time because both cannot be used at the same time to control the LED. So these thresholds and variables will help us to do that, which will be more clear once we get to that part. We use these integers to store the values of the sliders and pots of each color. For the setup function, we start the software serial with the same baud rate as the one in ASP01. Then we set all the LED pins as outputs since we want to ultimately generate PWM signals to control the RGB LED. In the loop function, first we read the potentimeter values. We then check if serial is available from the ESP. If there is a connection, then we read until there is a line break, which will read the red, green and blue values we sent from the ESP in the form of a string separated by spaces. And then we extract the red, green and blue values and store them in their corresponding variables. These are the sliding values coming from the sliders from the app. After we have obtained the readings of both methods, the potentimeters and the sliders on the phone, this is where we need to determine which values to use, the values from the pot or the values from the sliders. We can do this by simply checking which method was used last. So if you turn the potentimeters, we will use the potentimeter values to control the color of the LED. If we then slide the sliders on the phone, we will use those values. The way we can do that is to take the absolute difference between the sum of the last and current values of both ways, the pots and the sliders. And if this difference is greater than the thresholds, we created earlier, then that is the method used. 0 for the pots, 1 for the sliders. I found the threshold of 15 to be good to use for the potentimeters, because even if a pot is not turned, the value of the pot is not stable, it can change. So we have this threshold to deal with that. And use a threshold of 5 for the sliders, so even if we adjust the sliders accidentally on the app, it does not switch to using the sliders. Then we simply check which current method is used, and output a PWM signal using the corresponding values. We then finally need to update the last pot and last slider values for the next iteration of the loop. A delay of one millisecond is added to keep everything stable. And that's all the programming done. Now we just need to upload this code to the tiny using USB ASP. Here are the connections you need to make. Once you've made the connections, plug the USB into the computer. We first need to select a programmer. To do this, go to Tools and select the programmer as the USB ASP. And then after that, press Burn Bootloader. And finally upload the code by going to Sketch and pressing Upload using Programmer. Now I did think about making the code more efficient by for example making the ESP go to sleep or making the tiny output less often. But after testing it, I found that the power consumption was super low and there was no need to make any changes. Now that all the programming is done, we are ready to power everything up. So put the ESP01 and the tiny back on the breadboard, connect everything up and turn it on using the switch if you have used one. So you can turn the potentimeters to change the colors.
and you can also seamlessly just slide the values on the phone and it will change the LED accordingly. And then you can also of course go back to using the pots just by starting to turn any of them. Now if you have a 3D printer and want to put it in a nice case and use it as a real thing, I have left the 3D models below that you can print. Once printed, solder everything together and put it all in a box and you'll get something like this which looks really complete and really nice. And that is that, now you have made an RGB that can be controlled in two different ways. If you enjoyed this video or learned something from it, please consider subscribing. I'll be posting really cool projects in this channel, from creating autonomous vehicles, robots, simple projects like this, projects for all levels, beginner, intermediate and advanced. So do please consider subscribing to make sure you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.